Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, divide players into teams of equal skill. So a nice little cozy problem for us to solve today. So we're given a set of numbers. Each of these corresponds to a person's skill level. We want to partition this into groups of two. They can be chosen however we want. So like they don't have to be adjacent. I could have chosen a group of two to look like this and however else we want to. But every single group of two has to have the same sum. Not the two individual elements need to be equal, but the sum of this and this and this have to be the same. So right now this is five, this is six, and this is seven. Clearly they are not the same. If we put both of the threes in a group and then the two and the four and then these two, then each of them will have a sum of six and that does work. Then they'll all have the same sum. Now, if it's not possible for us to do that, we want to return negative one as like the default value. But if it is possible for us to do that, and we looked at one possible way, which is this, I just color coded it to make it obvious, but we would go through every group. So the green group and take the two numbers and then multiply them together. Three times three. Same thing with this group, five times one. And then this purple group is going to be two times four. And then with all of these, we're going to add them up. And then this is the return value. Now, the first question you might wonder is, well, what if there are multiple solutions? What do we do in that case? Well, I'm going to show you that there can't possibly be multiple solutions. And once I show you that, you'll probably know how to solve the problem pretty easily. The main requirement is that each group sums up to the same thing. So let's say we have n elements. In this case, n is equal to 6. So therefore, we're going to have this divided by 2, this many groups. We're going to have three groups. So if I told you that every element in the input is going to be a positive integer, can you now tell me how much each group needs to have? What value does it need to have? Well, all you do is take the total of the entire thing, which is 18, and divide it by the number of groups. So we're going to get six for every group. It has to be like that. It has to have six in every single group. So now we know that much. We know what we're looking for. Now, if we go through each element, one valid way to solve this problem is kind of like two sum two or container with most water. I think two sum two is probably uh, the more similar problem though. So if you are looking for one, I would check that problem out. I have a video for it. But if we took all of the elements and sorted them, we'd get something like this, one, two, three, three, four, five. We could then do a two pointer approach for each element we map it to the element on the other side. And the reason we do this is because if there is a valid solution, the smallest element must be mapped to the largest element. Like we would not ever map this to the second largest element because then what are we gonna group this guy with? Something even bigger? If that's the case, then this pair automatically is gonna have a sum larger than the other one. So we'd kind of follow a two-pointer approach and we'd keep shifting the elements and we could keep verifying that the sums are equal to what we expect. If they're not, at that point we would return negative one. This is a valid approach, but due to sorting, it's going to be n log n, and then like the two-pointer approach is going to be the linear part. But this is the bottleneck. We can actually do this problem without sorting, similar to how you solve two sum the regular way, just by using a hash map to store the diff. Because as I kind of showed, if we know for sure that the target, which is how much each group is going to have, is going to be six, we know that for sure, then what we can actually do is scan through the input for each element, for example, three, we can just compute the diff. This has to be grouped with another three. There's no other possible element that this could be grouped with because the target has to be six. So only three could be grouped with this. We do happen to have another three. So we found one valid group. Great. And we go to the next element two. The diff is going to be six minus two. That's four. Do we have a four? Yep, we do. So kind of cross that out. Same thing here five, we have a one, and then we're good. If we didn't have a one, if we had a two instead, at this point, we would have to return negative one because there isn't a solution. So what I did was just by drawing over this array, I kind of crossed out elements. But in terms of coding it, you can't really manipulate an array as you iterate through it. At least it's not good to do that. So a better approach to this would be to dump all of these into a hash map, which I'm going to call count, where we take each value, map it to the count of that value, so we'd have something like this. So I've taken each value, mapped it to the count, and then we could still iterate over the input array. At least that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to see there's a three here. Okay, the count of three is non-zero. I'm going to compute the diff of it. 
So I'm gonna start by computing the total sum of the input, and I'm just gonna use the built-in sum function in Python, and then I want to know if we can even divide this into enough groups. So what I would say is take the total and then mod it by the length of the input divided by two. This will work, I'm pretty sure, but I just kind of prefer to have multiplication instead. So if I multiply this by two and this by two, we'll actually get something like this, and then we don't need to do division but that doesn't really matter. That's a very small thing. So if this is non-zero, that means that we can't divide it into that many groups. And in which case we don't need to do anything. We can just immediately return negative one. Now, if that's not the case, we want to count the occurrence of each value in scale. Now I could create a loop. I could create a hash map and do that. But Python provides something built in called a counter, which will save us a couple lines of code. And it'll do exactly that, just count the occurrences of each element. You can learn more about these little tricks in my Python for Coding Interviews course if you're interested. Um, but at this point, we want to compute the result, like that product, and then we want to return it. Now, how do we get there? Well, we're going to go through every value in the skill array, but first let's compute the target value that we're actually looking for. So I'm going to compute it like this. We take the total and divide it into half this many groups, but I'm just gonna rewrite that with like multiplication. So I'm gonna do two times the total and then integer divide that by the length of skill. Doesn't really matter. You can do it however you want. You could have divided this thing by two first and gotten rid of that. But now we're gonna go through every skill, every integer value. Now it's possible that the count of this might actually be zero because as we're going through the skills, we're gonna be doing two at a time. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So what I'm gonna have here is if not this, so the count of that is equal to zero, then continue, because then we don't need to find a matching pair for this element anyways. Otherwise, we need to find a matching pair. And to do that, we need to get the diff of this element with the target. So target minus S, that gives us the diff. Now we want the count to be non-zero, but if it is zero, if not count of the diff, or maybe the diff just doesn't exist in the hash map at all, in that case, we can also return negative one. In either case, return negative one. Otherwise, we can update our result by adding to it the product of S and the diff, the two elements that make up the pair, and then we can update the count of each element. So incre uh, decrement that by one and decrement uh, the diff count by one. So this is the entire solution. I'll run it. You can see it works. I do believe it's pretty efficient in terms of big O, N, like it is a linear time solution and it is linear space as well, depending on the number of possible values skill can have. Now I'm wondering, to be honest, here we check the diff, that the count of the diff is non-zero, but what if S and the diff were actually the same element and then we check that the count is non-zero? That makes me think that we should probably put this line up above. We should put that here or at the very least before we check this. But for some reason, it still passes on leak code the original way that I had it. I'm not sure if that's just because we do the verification here, or I'm not sure maybe if leak code is just missing a test case. Let me know if you have any thoughts on that. But if you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.